they're trying to trick you. And I don't think anybody likes to be made a fool out of, so don't let them. Welcome to episode two of Inside Security. Today I'm talking to John Stewart, who's a Senior Vice President and Chief Security and Trust Officer with Cisco. John, thanks for joining us. Great, it's good to see you. Can we start with you defining the term zero-day threat, please? Sure, so a zero-day threat is essentially one that no one has ever seen before, usually based on some sort of weakness in software or computers or systems that nobody knew about before either, including even the vendor that produced it. Why do we have zero-day threats? The industry has been building software for a very long time, so it seems strange that there continue to be vulnerabilities in some of the world's most popular and expensive software. I've actually been a software developer my whole life, right? So I actually was a professional software developer before I ran Cisco security business. One thing to understand about software is there's always going to be defects in it. And for all the software that's been written, there aren't even enough testing tools that can find every possible combination of things that would actually go wrong. Software is incredibly sophisticated. It's always pushing the envelope for more and more sophistication. And there's always going to be vulnerabilities there. There's always going to be defects. There's always going to be things that, that people didn't see. And there's a whole lot of people out there trying to figure out what those are so they can come up with these zero-day exploits. What are the consequences of the types of successful attacks that we're seeing today? Well, at a, at a personal level, you might actually have to be cleaning up an identity loss. So all of a sudden, your credit card's gone, uh, or it's copied, at least it's being used illegitimately. Take that to a country level. Whole um, studies have been done in certain countries on the amount of gross domestic product that's actually being lost as a result of the attacks and the intellectual property that's uh, illegitimately copied, um, certainly the criminal activities. And then that's a, a tax problem, that's a personal problem, it's a country problem. And then the final thing on the consequences side of this is we've moved to a day where the consequences can be unknown. So for example, we've got companies that we've been reading about in the newspaper who woke up one morning and suddenly had their business model almost erased. What can these companies and individuals do in order to avoid those consequences? Companies, very much along the lines of bringing it all the way up into the boardroom. This is a relatively new risk area for every single institution because frankly, I don't know of a company right now that isn't enabled by IT, if not vitally designed around IT. When you walk into a company, you can endanger a company because you become an unwitting participant in an attack. And the case that I, I basically go for here is every link that shows up in email wants to be clicked and every attachment wants to be open. We get so used to doing it so quickly that the first kinds of tests that we've oftentimes done in companies, two thirds of the people that are essentially given information will click on it even though they have no idea what it is or where it's going to go. That's got to have a healthy dose of doubt. You've got to study it, make sure, check it, slow down and then make sure that, in fact, you're not helping an adversary get inside your infrastructure. I'm here with Andrew Dell, the Head of Security Operations from NAB. Andrew, welcome. Thank you. What do you do then to try to look for the results of a, an attack that takes advantage of a zero-day vulnerability? The first line of defence is often the eyeball or there's something this isn't right. Um, and, and it's as much about awareness, and an awareness campaign is important, but also a, a, a what to do when you, when you see something that's suspicious and in a big organisation, who do you contact? So we do a, we do a lot of work in that way and we have, we have a, a concept of uh, security champions who are sort of a contact point that, or a conduit in when you have those types of questions. There's a real investment in, in running a good shop in the first place and having an understanding of what is normal and what's not. Uh, and then it comes into the challenge of, you know, of uh, data analytics and, and, and looking at looking for those anomalies and relying heavily on your, your technical service owners and your, your system operators to actually call out, hey, there's something suspicious here. How much value does a security incident fire drill add to the entire security response process? Yeah, regular rehearsals or fire drills are really important. If you don't have that regular exercise discipline, when you're looking at a problem, you're going to think of it as an exercise. And a great example of that is under exercise conditions, finding a compromised machine or host, and then acting on the fact that that's compromised and assuming it's because it's part of the exercise. The real trick is that person investigating that and actually looking to how was that machine compromised, what was the technique, and then you get the full value of the exercise. Block as much as possible, have the best possible defenses, products that block the highest percentage of known and emerging threats, and then the ones that do get in focus on the time to detection and the time to remediation. This is something we need a lot of help on and everybody contributes and plays a role, which gets me to the individual side of this. 
on a day-to-day -day basis in your home. We all get the interruptions that say you need to upgrade your software. And it might be the browser, it might be the actual operating system, it might be your phone, it might be you name it. And we also get those, hey, you need to re, you know, sort of re-sign up for your, uh, your antivirus software or the upgrade to uh, your you know, home router or whatever it is. The more we do that correctly, the less it's possible for the world to use your systems in participating against attacks. It's all walks of life with all hands on deck because it actually has to be something that, frankly, more than technology tries to fight.